All right, now it is no news that cultism is rampant among students of tertiary institutions in Nigeria and other countries in Africa. But the worrisome development is the spread of this menace into secondary schools and other pre tertiary institutions. However, the death of Sylvester Oromoni, a student of Dowen College, a private school in Lagos, uh, Nigeria's economic hub, has again brought uh, the for the matter for needed conversations to effect the desired change in the policy. Now, New Central's Ni Amoni has the details. The internet was sent into a frenzy on 30th November 2021 after the news surrounding the controversial death of Sylvester or Romani, a 12-year-old boy from South-South Extraction in Nigeria, came to light. Sylvester, a student of Doen College situated in Lekki, a suburb of Lagos State in the southwest region of the country, was allegedly beaten to death by senior students of the school after his refusal to join a cult group. The parents' account and that of a child from the same school corroborate the allegation. The boy could not stand. The boy could not eat. The boy is shouting my mouth, my waist, my back, my chest, everywhere. It was on Monday between the hours of 11 and 12. That was when it started off. He told us that he didn't play ball. He didn't go to any field. That he was in his room with his mates sleeping on his bed. They walked into their room. They put off the lights. They beat him, beat him. Then he fell from his bed. They started mashing with, with a leg. He was my friend. Before Sly started complaining of leg pain, he told me he had muscle pull. So I carried him. Me and his best friend, Alex, we carried him to the sick bay. We brought food so, from me from the cafeteria. The one that they came Fed to him. pick five o'clock with convoy now is one of the bad boys that beat him. Up. Yes. And the parents know what child means. They came to pick their own. Yeah, they and they did him. not train the boy very well. I think they say one of the boys jumped fence and ran out of school. Sequel to the ugly incident. The Lagos state government ordered the indefinite closure of the school as it currently begins investigation into the matter. The student's death has, however, continued to generate widespread criticism on social media platforms, leading to numerous demands including the hashtag Justice for Sylvester. The parent of one of the alleged culprit have denied claims of their son's involvement, while the school has released a statement pledging to support the police investigation. Will justice eventually take its course? Will the perpetrators of these heinous acts be brought to book? These and other questions are on the lips of many. Time, they say, will tell. Ni Omani, New Central. All right, now still continuing with the story. Uh, well, uh, let's take a look at this recent statement from Doen College uh, itself. The school released this over the weekend, so you can have that uh, on your screen as of right about now. And it says, our deepest sympathies go out to the family of one of our beloved students, Sylvester Oromoni Jr. He was, um, he was dearly loved by teachers, his fellow students, and was a beacon of light for the school. Now they've come out to say that understandably at this time of intense grief and suffering, emotions are raw and tensions All right, are but, high. But Oluja, I'd like to pick out this, uh, you know, on the first page of the statement, uh, what it uh, said there regarding, because there'll be lots of back and forth claim and counterclaim on the internet but look at this it says we are assisting the authorities to get to the bottom of this heartbreaking incident, incident. all right so uh they registered the threat that transpired in the past november sylvester's untimely death requires thorough proper investigation so they have not said what happened or so they talk about football or no football this avoided here just saying totally. the assistant. All right. Saying investigation is still underway. Now, also, let's not forget that we also saw a video um, of a PTA meeting of some sort where some parents were also giving up their own piece of the story. Now, the question many are asking is, what happened to the late Sylvester Oromani? Was it really football related or not? How is the family coping in these trying times? And how do we as a family, a society, a country, how do we avert bullying in our schools? Well, Joining well. us this morning is Dr. Memuna Yusuf Kaderi. She is a medical doctor, a mental health advocate, 
a psychiatrist and a psychotherapist. Good morning, Dr. Memona. Many thanks for joining. Now, this story is one that has left many mm. with questions yet unanswered. Can you tell us how this will impact on fellow students in the school psychologically? Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, it's sad that somebody had to die and a 12 year old um, just to create this opera. Um, bullying, as is it in a 2021 thing? No, bullying has been there for time immemorial. Um, I was a budding student for the whole six years in secondary school. What we should look at in the case of Sylvester Oromoni Jr. with regards to his dorm mates, school mates, classmates, uh, football mates, because we have those kind of friends in clusters, and the entire school in general is how they, what they are going through, what is going on in their minds right now. These are children. We shouldn't neglect that. And the, the thing is that we shouldn't see children as small adults. Children are not small adults. They are kids, they are still growing, their brains are still growing, they have a lot of emotions. Half of all mental illnesses start before the age of 14 to talk before the age of 24. A lot of you know um, um, awareness has to go in within that school premises. Sadly, when I put up a post on, on Saturday, I said, after this boy's demise, this children and the teachers, the whole management, they need not less than seven, within some two hours, they should actually be given what we call psychological debriefing. There was a loss and this will impact the lives of these children. But of course, for, for the investigation, this school doesn't have a parent teachers association. So who do we see, who do we meet to bridge this gap? Some of them may not be sleeping well right now. Some of them may not be eating well right now. Some of them may be having nightmares as it is right now. Some of them may, may already have started having what we call withdrawal to themselves. As I left on Sunday, somebody that was the head of a teens um, part of the church said one student in year one um, was crying throughout the church service. So we cannot take anybody in isolation. All of them have to be in one room talking and debriefing them so that they can unpack their emotions. Let's not just assume after all their children, they will get better with time. No. Some of us that are adults right now are still carrying on board our past traumas and we are using it to hurt other people. We should always remember this statement. Hurt mm. people. Ah. Hurt people. Well, Dr. Mimula, that's why we have you because of your work and field in the mental health space because this late Sylvester has a classmate has a seatmate, has people he plays football or plays, shares pencils and barrels, shares, has teachers who teach him daily and no more. So you're talking about recovery now. What about for the parents, not just for his classmates and for the school? What about the parents now going forward? The loss of a, a child you sent to school, the burden. I don't want to think about what is going on with the parents right now, especially the mom. It's not like I'm biased. But because we know that women are more prone to emotional issues, especially when it comes to depression. And women, of course, she carried the baby for nine months, not showing breastfeeding. Let's not go into that. These parents need a lot of support. You know, speaking with them, people were saying, oh, why are they doing birthday? It may just be their own way of healing. We all heal differently. And of course, finding closure. Let's not take it for granted that they're just trying to cloud chase, no. They need the law of speaking to as a family group session, individual, and let us know who is this impacting more on. Look at the father breaking down TV. Like men don't cry in Africa, like openly that way. So he is hurting. And if the man is hurting like that, just think about the wife and the children. They need all our support as it is right now. People, family members that come around should never make statements like, don't worry, time will heal. Don't worry, you have other children. Don't worry, God is in control. These are some of the things people that come around them shouldn't say right now. If you have nothing to say, I am here. It's just okay. Right. And right. then ask them what they really want us mm. to help them do. That mm. also is a good healing process. So it, it, it's, it, it's, it's important that aside from Sylvester's parents, 
Parents also in that school, they need a forum to also unpack their emotions. Parents are going to take their children out of that school. Not only that, parents will be traumatized when children start telling them all the horrid stories that they are um, traumas that they've been going through that ne they never found um, um, a window to open up. So there's a whole total, oh, there should be a total overhaul. Now, Do Dr. Namula, you just spoke about parents having a forum where they can open up and say a piece of mm. their mind. Now, we have this video of parents from the school who had a Zoom PTA uh, meeting. Let's take a look at what transpired at that meeting. And I resigned because of that. My son is the victim. They did examine what no, they did to the my The second son. Problem, problem, madam. Boy, they put up the line. They, they beat him. They, 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 they were dancing around. They carried a box on his head. Okay. So yeah, the, uh, unfortunately we were having issues with the video, but the audio you are hearing is uh, a Zoom. I've not seen um, more than twelve. You know the way Zoom are in terms of the pages and pictures of uh, what transpired during the Zoom. Uh, so I suppose the PC meeting that happened and was released yesterday. In fact, it was been online. Now, Dr. Memuna, that then brings me to the question of the case where we are now. What what uh, allegedly transpired to the death of this child is bullying that perhaps causes him, you know, and it's not only just about Doen College. Many schools are facing these challenges when it comes to bullying. Dr. Memuna, you're into mental health, psychology, therapy. Bullying doesn't look like it's going to go any, anywhere anytime soon, but somehow it's got to stop somehow because it's starting from this young age. So what do we do as parents, as teachers, as the media, as people, even as children? Yeah. Awesome question. If sadly I was in that meeting and I saw what happened from beginning to the end, and luckily we're having another one on Thursday, another one on Saturday. Parents speak out so that we can get to know all of these whole stories. But one thing is that a lot of schools claim to have anti bullying policy. It's good we have it, but let them also make sure they walk to it. Walk, you no, know, walk the talk, not just having it and leaving it there until a situation like this arises. Therefore, parents, let's go back to intentional parenting. Let us know what has changed in our children. If you notice something, say something. Let us not keep quiet until. A case of Sylvester comes out again, and then you will not say, Oh, my child was being bullied. I, I went to school, I complained. They said they did this, but I don't know whether they actually did that. Raise the roof, whatever you have to do, as far well as you know that your child is on, on track. Just make sure that we know what we are doing. Boarding schools are not rehabilitation centers. Parents, please. They are not, you cannot, you cannot say, you No, know, outsource your parenting. It is a parent's teacher's. Thing. So when you take your children to boarding school, you should also see follow up on what is happening to that child. And of course, for schools, I would seriously advocate, aside from anti-bullying policy, there are certain things that will also reduce, you know, um, ways that children view themselves. Because this courtism comes from, oh, I'm in this state, my father is this, my mother is this, and all that. All that provision in schools, I think it should be scrapped. Let everybody be eating what is provided in school. Uh, right. Money in school, it should be being in form of vouchers where every child will have a name to their own mm. whereby you and then children should be open to having money you know then in all the floors of the school let them be house parents that now, will make now sure doctor, the doctor at this point i mean this yeah. this is not the first time we've heard of bullying in schools if not for social media this yeah. may not have gotten out there i mean even at that pta zoom meeting that we just saw one of the parents talked about her own child who was bullied but in her own case the child survived the child did not die in that same zoom link we saw a teacher a former staff of the school who left on the grounds by um, on the grounds of such this such situations yeah. as this ba ba such bullying yeah. scenarios that is happening in the but school but basically if we did not have social media to blow this up it would have just been another case. And they, I'm, they, I'm sure there are lots of cases like this all over schools. Day schools, boarding schools, all over Nigeria. In a case where the I'm teacher... Not, now, Dr. Memona, in a case where the teachers or the staff of the school are aware and they are trying their best, but they are being shot down by the school management, how can they manage or handle it? That is where the disconnect comes in. You cannot tell a teacher because a parent has come to report about a child and tell the teacher to kneel down and say sorry to, to the student. It is wrong, culturally and otherwise. The truth is that 
We need schools that will stand up to their responsibilities. We need teachers that will stand up to their responsibility. Parents, likewise. We need all hands on deck. Schools should be mentally safe for children. Likewise, our homes. So schools, for example, teachers are already there. Train them to be mentally first aiders so that everybody will be able to pick up all these early signs and symptoms if there is any. And if there is bullying, let there be that responsibility of reporting. Don't keep quiet as a parent. I have a child we are seeing right now. She said her, children, her friends, five of them are bullied, bullied. But because it's not her directly, the parents who brought her and the girl cannot report to the school. It's another big private school in Nigeria. So these are some of the things that are happening. I strongly believe we that went to schools that you know were being bullied or we had issues with bullying, we should have our reunions as healing you know, uh, sessions. Mm. Not necessarily coming to check us out on who, who is driving the latest car, who is living in the big biggest house. Let us have, in fact, if we, as, as it is right now, Nigeria should declare National right. Healing Day. Because everybody right. is coming now with all, all right. the worries. Thank, thank you so much. Of, of, of well, mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Dr. Memunak, uh, Yusuf Kadri, a medical doctor, mental health advocate, psychiatrist, and psychotherapist. Always good to have you on the program for your insight and depth on Breakfast Center. Thanks once again, Dr. Memunak.